Hey everyone, this is Louis7 and I will be giving an overview of the upcoming update 23.2 patch notes in the Lord of the Rings Online as well as my thoughts and impressions of what is coming up and this will be fairly similar to my update 23.1.7 video if you are curious. So the first thing is the update will come out tomorrow, I assume sometime in the morning. The servers usually go down like 8am to 12pm but I don't actually see on the forum post when the servers will be down themselves but Anyway, moving on to the update, the patch is actually overall smaller than update 23.1.7, which might be surprising because 23.1.7 was a dot dot update and this is a dot update. And I think what happened is it was probably initially intended for both of these updates to be actually one update, probably update 23.2, but they probably didn't have some things ready like the raid and already had all the other changes done like with the Bjorning and Burglar. But moving on to this actual patch, the big things in the patch include a new multi-boss raid, some minor class changes, some crafting additions, new Lotro store items, and some bug fixes and other miscellaneous changes. And if you do want to follow along, I will link the notes in the description below. So the first thing we have here of special note is the Anvil of Winter Stith, and that is the new raid in, in the game. And that raid doesn't open just to note this until 10am on Thursday, actually January 10th. But this raid is a, of an ancient frost dragon, and your goal is to prevent Karaz, Karazgar, the Weeping Warrior, from adding the Mastiff Frost Sword to his host. So this is a multi-boss raid, and will initially release Tier 1 and Tier 2 difficulty, and then Tier 3 will be added a month later. They also have some limited time titles if you complete it, I think one month for the Tier 2 and Tier 3 titles after Tier 3 difficulty is released. But as far as what I think of that, I haven't actually tested the raid or done anything. I personally haven't enjoyed update 23.2 and, well, update 23 end game, I mean, all that much, but I don't want to say that bias, don't want to let that bias actually affect my thoughts on the raid, because the raid could be fun, it actually sounds fun if it is the lair of an ancient frost dragon, that does sound fun to me, but again, I haven't actually played the raid, so I'm not too familiar with that, what it's actually going to be like, but... I think additions and as far as for in-game content since there hasn't been a new raid for the increased level cap that's always a good thing and I assume people that have been playing the in-game are excited for that. So moving on to the class changes, they fix an issue with Grimbjorn Spirit buff uh, not working if they use it on themselves. And then one, actually, this is a kind of significant change. Most of the changes here are minor and the class changes, some fixes and stuff, but one of the big changes here is actually class trait points have been capped at 92 points now. And you can get only 91 points right now, so there's no immediate change, but I think this change actually could be very beneficial to the future of Lotro, especially as they move on to higher levels and get more trait points. The main reason is because I don't like having to do Rohan and Gondor and all those like quests to get some minor trait points which largely affect your character, especially some classes like Hunter, but I think if they implement future content and allow you to get more trait points different ways, I think this could be a great change just having that cap. I also think it would be interesting if they made a cap for like certain levels. So like at level 50, there's a certain cap. I don't know what it would be like 40 or something, just throwing out a number. But I do think there's nothing immediate now that changes again, but I think this could be a great change for the future, but that will depend on what Standing Stone Games decides to do in the future about giving class trait points. And then another change with the trait system overall is your capstone traits, which are on the bottom row of your trait panel for your character and your specs. They require you to, you to actually be in that specialization and at least 45 both of those requirements. I think the major one for that is actually being in the specialization. And the level 45 change is just if you happen to have gotten a lot of trait points from class deeds because I actually did test this out and I would not have anywhere near 45 or enough trait points to get that bottom row at level 45 rather. And I think that is... I guess a positive change that won't really affect me too much, just something good to know. Some players, I don't know if they try to get the capstone trait if they're in another spec and that's where I think the biggest effect is, but any of my builds that I have ever done, that really doesn't have any effect on me. So there is a change with the lore masters here, 
their legendary brown wizard trait that would make pets a level three higher than you so they'd be at level 115 is that the cap right now they would be three higher levels higher than you basically your pet but instead of doing that now it just grants them a large general buff i assume the effect is overall the same i'm actually kind of curious though if that made them stronger i think that would be it would be kind of nice to see a buff there to the blue line lore master and then bjorning skills have their proper hit sound effects that's always a good thing to have your proper effects there i haven't noticed a problem with that but usually i don't pay too much attention to all my sounds and when i'm playing alone i don't actually usually have any audio on but Bjorning's Encouraging Roar final effect has been brought down to its intended levels when applied to Fellowship. I think that is the one that gives the Encouraging Roar. I think that is a heal, actually. I don't want to say too much on that, but it sounds like a nerf to healing, which Bjorning healing was already nerfed a little bit. I'm not too sure how I feel about that, but I suppose it's a good change that it fixed something. And then the Bjorning movement speed from Wanderlust now overrides most other movement buffs. This is actually something that does affect me and something that has been bothering me since the Bjorning update with Wanderlust. Because, and I would always get, like, if I applied two movement speed buffs to myself, Wanderlust being one of them, it would always go with the slower one for some reason and not Wanderlust, so that was always annoying. Uh, so that's a really nice change to see. And then here's another one with the Bjorning. A lot of Bjorning ones, the rest of them are actually Bjorning, but... Aid the Assault now heals the Bjorning using Relentless Maul. So the yellow line Bjornings, they can heal the Fellowship using Relentless Maul, since that really makes sense, swiping your claws and healing your Fellowship. But it now also happens to heal yourself. I think that's a good change, and it was always something I thought it could do, but it just never did. I'm glad to see that that's a thing now. So the next two are bug fixes, and this one is just Bjorning's Sacrifice buff now lasts its proper 20 seconds, and the last one here is actually something I'm really sad to see, because Bjornings can no longer use bows in bear form. I was really having fun shooting arrows out of bows while in a bear form, but unfortunately we can't do that anymore. So moving on, we're in the crafting section now, and Empowered Mithrin Essences can now be crafted. I don't have too much to comment on that. Because again, I haven't really enjoyed update 23.2 endgame, so I'm not too sure what the essence situation is and what those essences would be. But perhaps if it actually, depending how it works out, it could be something fun to do. And give an addition to crafting, I feel like crafting is largely useless at high levels now, besides essences now, since they added those. But moving on, we have items here. Icons for Figments of Splendor, Modes of Enchantment, Embers of Enchantment, that loot box, all that loot box uh, stuff, and those currencies I guess associated with it. It just makes them easier to identify at a glance, that's what it says for that. I suppose that's a good change. It's There are a lot of things in Lotro that have the same icon and it's kind of annoying. So Lotro Store, they have added two new things. The first thing I'll go over is the Ironfold Crafting Tier is now available for purchase. So if you all don't know, you can purchase crafting tiers and complete them. I don't know honestly why Ironfold wasn't available before when it was released, but you can now do that. And then they have added a few new account-wide mounts, and the thing I want to emphasize here is they're account-wide, and that's one thing I found a problem with Lotro. A lot of mounts, especially the ones you earn in-game now, but I think some store-bought ones at some point weren't account-wide. Uh, not actually too sure on that, so moving on to this, though. I think it's really good that they are account-wide mounts, and it doesn't say how much they cost in the patch notes. That's kind of annoying. But it has Steed of the White City, Steed of the Hunter, Fleet-Footed Goat, nice to have a goat there that's account-wide as well, Steed of Daggerlad, Green-Painted Skeleton Steed, Steed of the Minstrel, Steed of the Kundalore, Steed of the Iron Hills, and Obsidian Steed. I personally don't know if I'd actually purchase any of these, I just like having the option for an account-wide mount available to purchase, and as far as things to spend points on in the Lotro store, a cosmetic is really not something I would do, but... If you like purchasing cosmetics and mounts and also having that account wide, I think that's a good addition to having the mounts purchasable. Moving on to quests and adventure areas, these are mainly bug fixes, it looks like, for a lot of these, but there is one note, there are new Ironfold quests, and I actually never got to making this video, but I think Ironfold, it seemed like a very incomplete zone, and they are adding new quests for it, and it actually goes to name the Slake list, which is one of the storylines I just felt like it was incomplete and we never really got much to do with him but he now needs our assistance 
in the Iron Fold and players that have completed the Lore of the Iron, which I assume is the last quest in the Iron Fold, will unlock that quest content and these quests are level 120 so I'm kind of curious what those quests are again. I keep mentioning this that I haven't played update 23, update 23 much, I think I keep saying U23.2 but as far as the Iron Fold goes I kind of enjoyed the zone it just as far as the zone goes, I really enjoyed it. I didn't think the questing was that great, but I'm kind of curious what those new quests are, if they're any fun, because I really love the environment of the zone. But I think it's really nice that they're adding more quests to that, because again, I really felt like it needed more quests, and it felt incomplete. Although those being level 120 quests doesn't really help too much with your lower level while leveling their quests, because you don't get enough XP out of that zone as it is without any boost or anything. And then we'll go ahead and move on to the next section and this is some UI changes. The vertical resize handle has been added to the quest log so you can resize your quest log and you can also scale your text. I think that's part of that change so you don't scale your text outside of the actual quest log. And also a resize handle added to NPC interaction handle which is kind of the same thing with the scaling. And then they did make, uh, there are actually this in the miscellaneous as well, but they made changes to the French and German character creation UIs. I'm, I'm not familiar with if there were any issues with those or what the changes are, but just to let you all know, that's part of the patch notes. And then Undiscovered, we're back into the miscellaneous changes by the way, the Undiscovered Stable Master Vendor icons are no longer cooled by dynamic particle rendering settings. That's kind of odd that icons would be rendered by that, but that sounds more like a bug fix that you're having to use dynamic particle rendering on a vendor icon like that. And then the final section here is known issues, and that's the anvil of the Winter Stith, the new raid. The bestow dialogue incorrectly sets that the quest resets every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday. It only resets on Thursday, so it sounds like the raid, or at least the tier 2 quest for the raid, which would be the raid and its rewards reset uh, once a week on Thursday, instead of three times a week as it says. I don't know if that will be in the final build once the update is actually released or if they will have that fixed, but it, that is important to note if you are a raider. Okay, so that will be it for the update 23.2 notes. We made it all the way down. Again, this is only my second time doing an update video like this. I feel like I got carried away with some things, but if you all have any feedback, I'd really greatly appreciate it. I would also like to hear your thoughts on the updates. If you want to comment below, I would appreciate that. And also, if you enjoyed the video, please do consider liking and subscribing for more. And thanks for watching, everyone.